I had just read Walter Isaacson's biography of, of, of Steve Jobs, his new, new biography of Steve Jobs. And if anyone personifies elite establishment journalism in the United States, it's Walter Isaacson, former head of CNN, former head of Time, uh, and now the head of the Aspen Institute. And uh, it, it, it's a good read, and, and it, it, it's a great story about, about Jobs. It's about a 500-page book. And on page 456, if I remember correctly, uh, he, there's an account of Jobs and some other Silicon Valley CEOs having dinner with Obama earlier this year, in February of 2011. And uh, uh, Jobs is saying, you know, we, we really don't have enough really skilled engineers. Uh, <clears throat> that's one reason we had to go to China. That's why I have 750,000 people working for me in China. And then Isaacson goes on to discuss the rest of the dinner. That's the only reference in this book about Steve Jobs and Apple to the fact that they have 750,000 people working for them in China. The fact that, you know, I mean, the book has these elaborate, long, and very readable, very compelling uh, discussions of how he developed the iPod with these engineers and designers and marketers and the iPad and the iPhone, with, again, with the same collection of people. No mention is made of the fact that these things are assembled in China by a company uh, called Foxconn, uh, which employs over a million people, most of them making products for Apple, all of Apple's products, in fact, but also for Dell and Hewlett Packard and whatnot. But I talk about out of sight, out of mind. I mean, it didn't occur to Walter Isaacson that Apple is also a manufacturer that it has stuff to sell, and the stuff is actually made over there. There's this gap in American consciousness, in American elite consciousness, not only on the treatment of workers, but what this really, I think, showed was on the existence of workers. They're just not a subject. They're not there. They're nowhere in this book. Uh, and, and that, I thought, was the most revealing omission I could imagine. I mean, think about it for a minute. Apple had to put in a tremendous amount of work setting up their supply chain labor system. You just don't have just-in-time work with 750,000 people working in Shenzhen, China for you uh, by snapping your fingers. This was as major an undertaking as developing any one of their products, if not more so. It's, it's not in the book. It seems like a, st a story about Apple that's going to be complete would also include the rise of its manufacturing sector and its shift from America to China over time. That would be a, a, a thread think. that could weave through the drama. You would think. And initially, uh, when, they, when they first made uh, uh, the Apple computer back in the 80s, Jobs did set up a kind of state-of-the-art factory that was a high-tech factory in the Silicon Valley. And then he was booted out of Apple, and uh, the factory was closed. And when he came back, uh, when he came back, uh, it was the late '90s. Business was moving to China. They moved along with it, and these were decisions. This didn't happen because the sun rises in the east. These were conscious decisions that were made, and a tremendous amount of work putting into developing this whole supply chain. You know, those things. You know, I mean, Apple not only produces a, a really compelling product, but they have a really terrific supply chain from the point of view of uh, getting the product made, uh, underpaying the workers, and getting a huge profit. Uh, but it's not part of the book.